Well, good evening everybody again. Steve here. Tonight I'm going to read to you from my book Estos Insights as I did on another occasion. Uh, everybody seems to be fascinated with what I read last time. Today I'm going to read you from chapter 6 from what was Second Esdras, or my book's called Esdras Insights, which contains the whole book in it, plus comments and cross-references and explanations and links and stuff like that. So chapter 6, this has some incredible things in it. I think you'll agree when you hear some of the descriptions here, absolutely incredible descriptions. Anyway, without further ado, chapter 6, verse 1. And he said unto me, At the beginning of the circle of the earth, before the portals of the world were in place, and before the assembled wings blew, and before the rumblings of the thunder sounded, and before the flashes of lightning shone, and before the foundations of paradise were laid, and before the beautiful flowers were seen, and before the powers of movement were established, and before the innumerable hosts of angels were gathered together, and before the heights of the air were lifted up, and before the measures of the ferments were named, and before the footstool of Zion was established, and before the present years were reckoned, and before the imaginations of those who now sin were estranged, and before those who stored up treasures of faith were sealed. Well, that's just the first paragraph, and I'm going to go on. Paragraph 2. Then I planned these things, and they were made through me, and not through another, just as the end shall come through me, not through another. Verse 3. And I answered and said, What will be the dividing of the times? Or when will be the end of the first age and the beginning of the age that follows? And he said to me, From Abraham to Isaac, because from him were born Jacob and Esau, for Jacob's hand held Esau's heel from the beginning. For Esau is the end of this age, and Jacob is the beginning of the age that follows. For the beginning of a man is his hand, and the end of a man is his heel. Between the heel and the hand seek for nothing, Ezra. Verse 5. I answered and said, O sovereign Lord, if I found favour in thy sight, show thy servant the end of thy signs which thou dost show me in part on a previous night. And he answered and said unto me, Rise to your feet, and you will hear a full resounding voice. And if the place where you are standing is greatly shaken while the voice is speaking, do not be terrified, because the word concerns the end, and the foundations of the earth will understand that the speech concerns them. They will tremble and be shaken, for they know that their end must be changed. Verse 7. When I heard this, I rose to my feet and listened, and behold, a voice was speaking, and its sound was like the sound of many waters. And it said to me, Behold, the days are coming, and it shall be that when I draw near to visit the inhabitants of the earth. Verse 8. And when I require from the doers of iniquity the penalty of their iniquity, and when the humiliation of Zion is complete, and when seal is placed upon the age which is about to pass away, then I will show those signs. The books shall be open before the ferment. All shall see it together. Look at this next verse. Very odd. Verse 9. Talking about conditions in the end times, or the last days. Verse 9. Infants a year old shall speak with their voices, and women with child shall give birth to premature children three and four months, and they shall live and dance. Sown places shall suddenly appear unsown, and full storehouses shall suddenly be found to be empty, and the trumpet shall sound aloud, and when all hear it, they shall suddenly be terrified. What's that all about? Well, I explain it in the book. Verse 10. At that time, friends shall make war on friends like enemies, 
and the earth and those who inhabit it shall be terrified, and the springs of the fountain shall stand still, so that for three hours they shall not flow. And it should be that whoever remains after all that I have foretold you shall himself be saved, shall see my salvation and the end of the world. Verse 11. And they shall see the men who were taken up, who from their birth have not tasted of death. And the heart of the earth's inhabitants shall be changed and converted to a different spirit. For evil shall be blotted out and deceit shall be quenched. Verse 12. Faithfulness shall flourish and corruption shall be overcome. And the truth which has been so long without fruit shall be revealed. Verse 13. While he spoke to me, behold, little by little, the place where I was standing began to rock to and fro, and he said unto me, I have come to show thee these things this night. Verse 14. If therefore he should pray again and fast again for seven days, I will again declare to you greater things than these, because your voice has surely been heard before the Most High, for the Mighty One has seen your uprightness, has also observed the purity with which you have maintained from your youth. Therefore, he sent me to show you all these things, and to say to you, Believe, and be not afraid. Do not be quick to think vain thoughts concerning the former things, lest you be hasty concerning the last times. Now after this I wept again, and fasted seven days as before, in order to complete the three weeks as I had been told. And on the eighth night my heart was troubled within me again, and began to speak in the presence of the Most High, for my spirit was greatly aroused, and my soul was in distress. I said, O Lord, Thou didst speak at the beginning of creation, and did say on the first day, Let heaven and earth be made, and thy word accomplish the work. And then the spirit of hovering and darkness and silence embraced everything. The sound of a man's voice was not yet there. Then Thou didst command that a ray of light be brought forth from thy treasuries, so that thy works might appear. Again on the second day, thou didst create the spirit of the ferment, and didst command him to divide and separate the waters. The one part might move upward, and the other part remain beneath. And on the third day, thou didst command the waters to be gathered together in the seventh part of the earth. Six parts thou didst dry up and keep, so that some of them might be planted and cultivated, and be of service before thee. For thy word went forth, and at once the work was done. Verse 20. For immediately fruit came forth in endless abundance, and a varied appeal to the taste, and flowers of imitable colour, and of odours of inexpressible fragrance. These are made on the third day. And on the fourth day thou didst command the brightness of the sun, the light of the moon, and the arrangement of the stars to come into being, and thou didst command them to serve man who was about to be formed. And on the fifth day... Thou didst command the seventh part, where the water had been gathered together, to bring forth living creatures, birds and fishes, and so it was done. The dumb and the lifeless water produced living creatures, as it was commanded, that therefore the nations might declare thy wondrous works. This is very interesting, because it says the same thing in the book Enoch, that in the original creation, only one-seventh of the world was sea. And the rest of it was land. Now it's the other way around. Now it's 80% seas. Only 20% land. So things are very different today than what they were at the beginning of creation. Then thou dost keep in existence two living creatures. There's a couple of monsters you're talking about here. The one thou dost call Behemoth. And the name of the other Leviathan. Of course you can read about Leviathan in the book of Job. It compares it to the devil himself. And thou didst separate one from the other, for the seventh part where the water had been gathered together could not hold them both. Two big monsters. And thou didst give Behemoth one of the parts which had been dried up on the third day to live in, where there are a thousand mountains. That's a very interesting description there. The inner earth talks about a place of a thousand mountains. But to Leviathan, but we don't have a place like that on Earth where there's a thousand mountains, like volcanoes, that sort of thing. 
But a Leviathan now does give the seventh part, the watery part, and now has kept them to be eaten by whom thou will and when thou wilt. I did say here in comment 20 in the book, Leviathan and Behemoth are mentioned in the Bible in the book of Job, also in the book of Enoch. Why is it that we don't see these monsters today in modern times? If they existed then, where have they gone in modern times? Well, that's a big topic. See the appendix of this book concerning Behemoth and Leviathan. Verse 25, on the sixth day thou didst commit, no, command the earth to bring forth before thee cattle, beasts, and creeping things, and over these thou didst place Adam as ruler over all the works which thou had made, and from him we have all come, the people whom thou hast chosen. And this I have spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou hast said that it was for us thou didst create this world. And as for the other nations which have descended from Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing, and they are like spittle, as compared their abundance to a drop from a bucket. Now, O Lord, behold these nations, which are reputed as nothing, domineer over us and devour us. But we, thy people, whom thou hast called thy firstborn, only begotten, zealous for thee, and most dear, have been given into their hands. If the world hath indeed been created for us, why do we not possess our world as inheritance? How long will this be so? Okay, so now I'm going back to the beginning of this chapter 6, and I'm going to read you some of the comments I put in this book. So, it's very interesting. I'll just explain this one verse here, because it's so detailed, where it says, And he said unto me, At the beginning of the circle of the earth, well, look at this. Forget Columbus discovering the world and the, the world's round and all that. They knew it was round thousands of years ago in the Bible. And the prophets, they all said the earth was round. So it says here, this book was written something like 2,500 years ago. And he said unto me at the beginning of the circle of the earth, before the portals of the world were in place. Enoch also talks about portals, as I mentioned in one of my other audios. What are these portals? Modern man is seeing portals. They're seeing portals in the sky. They're seeing portals left, right, and center. And sometimes things come through those portals. How did the portals get there? Well, it says here, God is talking about the original creation of the earth, the circle of the earth. This shows that it simply is not true that Columbus is accredited for discovering the earth was round in 1492. But the Bible and Apocryphal books talked about the earth being a globe thousands of years ago. Like many other truths of real science during the Dark Ages, the truth was deliberately hidden or destroyed. There was a total clampdown on knowledge during the Dark Ages, from 500 AD to 1500 AD, and the time of the Inquisition, 1231 to 1834. Galileo was tried by the Inquisition. The worst days of the Dark Ages of absolute control of all knowledge will one day return under the Antichrist. Daniel 8.12 and a host was given him, the Antichrist, against the daily sacrifice for sacrifice by reason of transgression. And it cast down the truth to the ground. And it practiced and prospered. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's what's happening today. The truth is getting trodden to the ground, left, right, and center. And they're calling everything backwards. It's terrible what's going on now. They're making the world very confused. Anyway, back to the subject matter of this chapter. Comment two, portals of the world were in place. What portals might he be talking about? In the book of Enoch, it talks a lot about portals. Today, people talk about portals as gateways to other dimensions and places. Well, they're not far off in their deductions. As the portals mentioned in the book of Enoch, the oldest known book given to Enoch by God himself around about 5,300 years ago, were also sometimes gateways to other places. Portals were also a word which when one reads about, does initially sound quite mysterious. Things described in the Book of Enoch as coming through portals is not something that we ourselves can openly observe today. As I state in my book, Enoch Insights, it's my belief that portals are gateways from the spirit world to the physical world. Furthermore, the physical world in which we live is surrounded by much bigger dimensions, both higher and lower dimensions, which in fact control everything that happens in our dimension, except choice. Okay. 
Well, I think that's, that's all I'm going to talk about today. Just a little taste of this chapter. There's a lot more in this chapter. But this book of Second Esdras it is incredible. I will just do one more verse then. Like this one, I'll go back over verse 9, because it's so strange. Infants a year old shall speak with their voices. How can their one-year-olds speak with their voices? And women with child shall give birth to premature children at three and four months. And these shall live and dance. How can a three, four-month-old child live and dance? And sown places shall suddenly appear unsown. And full storehouses shall suddenly be found to be empty. This is what I said in the book. Comment 10. Very strange verse. What could it all mean? The key here is to see the mention of the trumpet shall sound. Question, which trumpet is being sounded? Everything described in verse 9 is either out of place or out of time sequence. As it would appear that something is interfering with time itself. For the infant mentioned everything's okay. But for many left on earth shall be terrified. This verse... Is clearly talking about the rapture. Enoch 82 through 4. And all things in the earth shall alter, and shall not appear in their time. And the moon shall alter her order. Wow. Matthew 24, 31. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of the trumpet, seventh trumpet. And he shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the one end of heaven to the other. Now, get this verse here. Revelation 10, 6. And swore by him that lives forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that therein are, and the earth, and the things that therein are, and the sea, and the things which are therein, there should be time no longer. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when it should begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he declared to his servants the prophets. In other words, this verse above, where infants should suddenly be speaking uh, just a year old and women who have children that are only three or four months old shall live and dance and sown places shall suddenly appear unsown the time sequence is wrong the times disappeared so everything is different and I would imagine at the rapture there will be plenty of pregnant women and irrespective their babies will survive God will make sure of that their babies will sing and dance they'll be fine but everything will change on that seventh trumpet when time itself shall be no more. And then comes the wonderful age where God's true church goes to heaven. A wonderful time we all look forward to. The rapture. Well, that's enough for me today. Have a great evening, everybody. Or daytime, or whatever it is, wherever you are. Bye for now.